Here's how to find the domain of a function without graphing. Now all you have to do to find the domain is figure out what numbers you can put in for x so that you don't break the function. For most high school math questions, there are really only two ways you can break a function. The first way is dividing by zero, and the second is taking the square root of a negative number. If neither of these things are happening in your function, then you can put in any number for x. So the domain will be all real numbers, which in interval notation is the same thing as negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's take a look at a more interesting function, 1 over x minus 2. Here we can see that dividing by 0 could happen if x was equal to 2. Because of this, 2 is the only number we're not allowed to put in for x. So we have to write our domain as all real numbers except x equals 2. This means when writing our domain out in interval notation, we skip 2 by writing negative infinity, comma 2, and then union to connect the other side, 2 comma positive infinity. Note that we used all parentheses here with our intervals, because nothing can actually equal infinity, nor is x allowed to equal 2. Now let's make it slightly harder. Here we see that the function is another fraction, so we're going to want to check the denominator to see what values of x make us divide by 0. Since this is a quadratic, we can do a little factoring on the bottom to get x plus 1 times x plus 3. This means that either x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 3 would cause us to divide by 0. So our domain is all real numbers except negative 1 and negative 3. If we were to write this out in interval notation, we would now have to connect three different regions, negative infinity to negative 3, union, negative 3 to negative 1, union, negative 1 to positive infinity. The last rule we got to look out for when figuring out domains is making sure we don't take the square root of a negative number. Now making sure something isn't a negative number is the same thing as checking if it is greater than or equal to zero. My trick here is that whenever you see a radical, take whatever is inside, write it as an inequality that is greater than or equal to zero, solve for x, and that's your domain. In this example, we have the square root of 2x minus 6, so 2x minus 6 must be greater than or equal to zero to not break the function. Doing a little algebra to solve for x, this gets us x must be greater than or equal to 3. Drawing it on a number line, it should be pretty easy to see that the interval notation would be 3 to positive infinity. Here the 3 has a bracket because x is allowed to equal 3 since the square root of 0 is just 0. Now let's put it all together for the final boss battle. Here we have two square roots and a fraction. Remembering from before, we know we can write whatever is inside the radicals as inequalities that are greater than or equal to 0. The exception here is that because we're not allowed to divide by 0, we also can't have the bottom square root equal to 0. So when writing the inequality for the denominator, we're going to have it as being just greater than 0. Working on the top gets our answer from before, x is greater than or equal to 3, while for the bottom, we get that x is just less than 5. Now our domain has gotten a little tricky, because the allowed values for x have to satisfy both of these conditions. If we draw these inequalities separately on the number line, we can now look for where the numbers overlap. Here we see that this happens when x is between 3 and 5, but not actually equal to 5. Writing this in interval notation, we use 3 comma 5 with a bracket first, and then a parenthesis at the end. And there you have it. That's how to figure out the domain of a function without graphing. Nice!